Hello, I'm Nahid Nenshi, Mayor of Calgary, and I'm pleased to virtually welcome everyone to the National Immigration and Citizenship Conference. You know, the work you do in terms of helping people realize their dreams here in Canada is so important. And in these incredibly difficult times, we've seen that new Canadians have been particularly hard hit, really underlying the importance of settlement and integration programs, underlying the importance of ensuring that every single person who comes here has the opportunity for a fair shake, has the opportunity to do well, to prosper here on this land. It's a promise our community has held for a very long time, but it's a promise that I think is a little bit shaky right now. With the amounts of anger and hate and division we've seen in the community, with our ongoing struggle to move from a pluralistic and multicultural and diverse society that we are so rightly proud of, to a society that is truly anti-racist. Together, we have a lot of work to do, but it's work that's well worth it. It's well worth it to allow every single person who lands on this land to have the opportunity right here, right now, to live a great Canadian life. You know, I'm not an immigrant. People often think I am, but I'm not. Uh, my mother was pregnant with me when my family came from Tanzania to Canada, so I often say, I was born in Canada, but made in Africa. And you know, growing up, my family always had these beautiful certificates of Canadian citizenship. And all I had was a lousy birth certificate. But as I got older, I realized that those beautiful citizenship certificates and that lousy birth certificate are in fact the most precious things my family owns because they represent a life of possibility a life of opportunity for generations yet to come. I love to tell my own immigration story. My father and my mother were running a hotel in Arusha, Tanzania, at the base of Mount Kilimanjaro. And then as now, that town was used for a lot of international conferences, a lot of UN work and so on. And my dad met some Canadian aid workers from the former Canadian International Development Agency, CEDA. And these CETA workers used to get the Toronto Star sent to them in their diplomatic pouches. For those of you who are under the age of 40, the Toronto Star is a newspaper. A newspaper is sort of like an iPad, but it comes on paper. Anyway, my dad was always a voracious reader. And so he would read the Toronto Star and he learned all about this land on the other side of the world. And in particular, he was really interested in the building of the then, the, the new, then new Toronto City Hall, which those of you from Toronto who've seen it know it's kind of a masterpiece of mid-century architecture. And he said to himself, someday I'm gonna go see that building. And some years later, he and my mom had the opportunity to represent their large family at a wedding in England. It's the first time they'd been on a plane. And dad said, well, since we're traveling, we may as well go see Canada. Uh, they didn't have Google Maps then, and I don't think he looked at Annapolis, so I don't know he knew how far that was. But sure enough, they landed in Toronto, and they were part of a little pioneer group of South Asians. It's almost unimaginable to think of Toronto without South Asians, but a little pioneer group, a pioneer group of Ismaili Muslims, four or five or six families, who then had the opportunity to look after tens of thousands of Asians from Africa the following year when the Asians were expelled from Uganda. And my family's life was a story of sacrifice and struggle and service. We call it seva in South, South Asian languages, but ultimately a story of success. So while we didn't have a lot of money, what we never lacked for was opportunity. I graduated from excellent public schools. I haunted the public library. I explored the city I love on public transit. I learned to swim very badly in a public pool. I grew up in a community that had a stake in my success. And 38 years after they arrived in Canada, my dad, just a couple years before he passed away, got to sit in a different city hall, thousands of miles away from the one he had always wanted to see and he got to see his son sworn in as mayor. And you know, that's an extraordinary story in its details. But what's extraordinary about that story is that it's perfectly ordinary. 
It is the Canadian immigration story. It's a story that we are privileged to help write for all those generations that have come and all those that are yet to come. So thank you for the work that you do. We have a lot more work to do. We have to do much better in helping people integrate and settle and build their lives here. We have to help them fulfill the promise of the community. We have to get over the world's greatest bait and switch, which is we tell people you have the skills and the degrees that you need, you can come to Canada, and when you get here, we go, oh, by the way, you can't work in your profession. We've got so much to do on language training, on workplace assistance, on foreign credential recognition. But regardless, we are driven by that simple promise of this place, that promise that it doesn't matter where you come from or what you look like or how you worship or whom you love. What matters is that you're here, that you belong here, that you're welcome here, that you'll be safe here, and that you right here, right now, have the chance to build that great Canadian life. Thank you for all you do. Let's keep working.